had to go get tested Monday because we had a community mm. garage sale last Saturday and we were walking around and it was like 90 degrees out to be fair. Mm. But we were like a mile away from home and I was like, I feel like shit and I can't breathe and I'm going to pass out. So we stumbled home. I chugged a bunch of water and then fell asleep for like three hours. And I woke up with a sore throat and a headache that I had for like two days. And I was like, Night. so I went Monday and actually Colorado was pretty well organized. Like I sat in my car for two hours, but they had a good system mm-hmm. and they come out and I like, they put that swab up there and I saw colors that only yes. exist in Lovecraft stories. You saw prehistoric beasts, yes. Yeah, like, um, I, I saw the color out of space. Because they get in there and they just poke you right in the pituitary. Yeah, like, if, if you didn't know, if you haven't had to have this yet, the the, the, the swab for the test is not just a little, we're going to stick this in your nose. No, no, no. they're going for, they're, they're, they're trying to see how far they can jam it in there. I think they're having a bets with one another. Uh, how like far they, they can jam the nose. The nurse that did me was good. Like she must, she she must have been doing a lot of these because she didn't even warn me. She was just like, okay, boom, boom, done. Before even a time to worry about it. And I was like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's a life skill. You're practicing shoving things up people's no. But I got the call today and I do not have the malware. I guess that's I just good. had a summer cold that's and should good. not have been out in the heat on top of it. That's that's the problem with this right now, with this thing going around. Every time you get a symptom, you're like, yeah. am I just feeling unwell or right. do I have or, the, the life changing, potentially lethal, definitely going to change my health for the rest of my life virus? Right. And like we have not left the house because Dan was like, if you have it, I have it, you know? Yeah. But uh, good news is we're okay. Yeah. Simba's okay. Peggy, uh, Peggy, you probably can't see, but she is up on her loft, snoring away. <laughs> she I took did. to it, huh? Oh, she loves it up there. I, we got her a bed, and she just sits up there and snores. None of the others go up there. No, Dottie made it to like the bottom shelf, and then was like, "Now, nah, this seems scary." And Simba just honestly could give a. Night. He likes to gaze at Peggy while she's up there because Peggy is Alpha and Omega. Like Simba just adores her, but he's not interested in going up there. Really, <sighs> she's our only tree dweller. Well, that having been said, it's time to get to the terrible stuff because just because we're late this week doesn't mean the show wasn't terrible. It was no. terrible. Let's get to it. Make sure I've got my buttons right. Put the, put the thing over there. All right. Simba, you just going to give everybody the butt? Oh, you yes, should be very is. scared because the fly that was in here earlier, Uh-oh. downstairs earlier, it's up here. He's got the last 10 minutes, like, <laughs> freaking out. Each week. Catherine, the radio dead air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And um, we're going to start off this week, which we this one, you just got to get it out of the way, like ripping a band aid off. Just going to throw this one out there. So uh, get it out of your system, everybody. Man steals three foot Moby Dick. From Las Vegas sex shop. Uh, if you want to have a look at it, there, there it is. It is a uh, three foot 50, 40 pounds. <laughs> Tara's just in awe. <laughs> a man is wanted in Las Vegas after stealing property from a sex shop. The suspect walked into Deja Vu Love Boutique last week and made off with what the store called. Moby Dick, a gigantic three-foot dildo. The man slung it over his shoulder and walked right out of the store. Police are now looking for the man whose identity was concealed behind a face mask. Deja Vu is offering a reward for any information leading to the recovery of Moby Dick, which retails for $1,200. Now, first of all, do you really want it back? Oh, Terry, you're, you're... your audio died. Where's your microphone? Nope, it's 
It's gone. Microphone muted. There you go. Better? There you go. Now it's back. I must have clicked a thing. Yeah. So yeah, um, do you really want it back? No, but you. But if you want to catch the guy, just wait for him to show up at the ER. <laughs> okay, that's the first. The second thing is, they there's a market for three foot thousand dollar dildos. Like I feel like this has to be decorative because the vagina is a really amazing organ and it can do a lot of things yeah and it is elastic obviously hmm. because right. babies are not small but it generally they're only like that long and they don't stretch this direction so like that's but that's on like the, on that's the, like at least two feet and three inches of wasted space but on the other hand tara we have seen so many terrible things on this show. My my I I I can't with absolute certainty say that someone out there is going this is not do you know what I do you know where I really hope this thing turns up? Where at a protest hitting a cop over the head. <laughs> Cause that's a melee weapon that is. A 40 pound dildo. And I love just the dude just for legal purposes. That was a joke. The dude just casual as you please. Just a figure. <laughs> like one of the fucking seven dwarves. <laughs> I ho, I ho. Oh, Susanna. Go. Oh, Susanna. Don't you cry for me. Cause I come from Alabama with a dildo on my knee. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's going to use it as his Christmas tree. <laughs> Santa's not coming down that chimney. You could just like stick smaller dildos to it for branches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dildo tree. Oh, dildo tree. I mean, there was one year I built a Christmas tree out of my stuffed hippos and just hung some fucking lights on it. If you're creative. <laughs> Uh, well, let's get it's it's time to get into these jackasses. Oh my god. There are dudes who seem to think the world works one way to the point that when they actually encounter that it doesn't work that way, have they already way in over their head. I mean, you've all known these people. They're they're like they're mostly people who yell at customer service, but this is like that, only it, it's it's annoying, and yet this is so heartwarming at the same time. Man brings video evidence about ex ex-girlfriend to police who charge him instead. An aura man told police he had video evidence of his ex-girlfriend engaging in illegal activity. He's now in trouble himself after officers inquired about how he got the video. The man, 28, was charged Tuesday in 4th District Court for, with voyeurism, a Class A misdemeanor, and witness tampering, a third-degree felony. July 6th, the man went to the Orem Police Department to say he believed his former girlfriend, former, was engaging in prostitution and then, quote, showed the officer video footage he recorded of her from her bedroom showing the victim in her other underwear with another man. That's when the officer asked if the woman knew there was a camera in the room. The man claimed she did know. But when the officer spoke to the woman, she said her ex-boyfriend sent her an email and, quote, told her to tell the police she knew about the camera and not to say anything stupid. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait just a goddamn fucking minute. There you go. <laughs> I want you to get arrested and put in jail. So I need you to cooperate. <laughs> no, no, no. Go fuck yourself. Uh, no. This <sighs> the fucking audacity. I'm, I'm for one thing. I'm pretty sure she was not engaged in anything even remotely like prostitution, just because of how much of a dick this guy is. 
Mm. I mean, you you don't court you know covertly film your ex and try to take it the police i mean it's utah so i'm assuming they do not have a revenge porn law in the books mm. but uh if you were in a different state that would also be a fucking problem for you but i i do love however that he he's already started with the misdemeanor which is yeah. terrible that that's a misdemeanor but he started with the misdemeanor he 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 had to, he he did not stay with his he wanted to go for door number two. Yeah, he won't never quit while you're behind. Yeah, and then he upped it to a third degree fucking felony because he had to go ask his ex girlfriend to fucking cooperate with him trying to get her fucked over. <laughs> I just want everybody to be clear on that point. And also, yeah, how cool are you going to be? Like, yeah, you know what? I recorded in your bedroom. Tell them you knew about it. Like, don't make a thing about it. No. I'm making a thing about that, yeah. I think. Probably making several things about that. It's just, I love this guy thought that this was going to, all right, well, this is how things work. You know, you just, I'm in the right. So, you know, this is, no, but I, I was doing the right thing. No, you see? Is just further proof that men were a first draft. <laughs> God made man and was like, well, we can make some improvements on that shit. Just like, what? And then the he made women. What? In I the look forward to your comments. What in the fuck was. How was this going to even work? Were they going to, like, thank you for bringing this to your attention, citizen? That's such. We'll, we'll take it from here. Yeah, but she was like a bitch. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, now let's go on to the other uh th there are two terrible plagues that are spread out across country obviously one is the pandemic and this other which is is responsible for untold chaos and carnage that we really must band together and put a stop to and that is of course gender reveal parties um yeah. pregnant florida woman punched in face at gender reveal party. A Florida man punched his brother's pregnant girlfriend Sunday during the gender reveal party. Now, before you be like, what the fuck? No, he didn't just walk up to her. No, no, it's stupider than that. Can we also talk about that the photo associated the story is an alligator? It's from a different gender reveal party. Oh. It's That's a, upsetting. Yes. Um, Marshall Richardson Jr. of St. Petersburg was arrested Sunday and faces charges of aggravated battery. Richardson was attending the reveal party of the victim, who is six months pregnant with the baby of Richardson's brother. During the party, Richardson told people to stop smoking near children at the party. Victim, reasonable. The victim became upset and called the defendant names. Not reasonable. Per the Not unworthy. Per the victim, the defendant got into a fight with his brother. While the two were being separated, the victim once again called him names, and he turned toward her and punched her once in the face. Several people witnessed the punch. The victim had minor redness in her left cheek and the jawline. First of all, let's just let's just cover. And if you're asking about the alligator picture, the the uh, Florida couple use pet alligator for gender reveal for family's twelfth child, family's tenth child. I don't even know how many things are wrong with that sentence. That's, a lot. That's a Florida for you. Um, if you are at a party to celebrate a woman and her child to be, yeah, and you end that party by punching said woman, you need to rethink some shit. Y'all, y'all, your ass needs to just sit down and do some things. I like the thing is you started out with the moral high ground because yeah, people shouldn't be smoking around children right, or pregnant women. Right, right. You you started out. We were on your side. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then you punched a pregnant lady. We were all we were all rooting for you. Yeah. And then the seeds that tyrant gift. How dare you? <laughs> we were all rooting for you. <laughs> Uh, so and then you punched a pregnant lady. Then Don't you do punch, that. 
that's one of those once when you've punched the pregnant lady it doesn't matter why you've lost the argument you just, not just lost the argument you're you're going you're, you're that's straight to jail yeah. because you punched the pregnant lady that once you, once you've you even hit that button everything just sort of stops yeah there is no counter argument yeah but she called me you punched the pregnant woman that's it. You're done. <sighs> and also, can we just not with the gender reveal parties anymore? It's, can a, we just... it's a danger. It's a, it, it's every time we it, it's 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 sort of like there's like a distortion field is created when when a, a gender repeal party comes together. It's sort of like how when they used to be Chuck E. Cheese's, which have gone bankrupt. That's going to really cut into my stories here. I know, um, like, where are white people going to fight now? <laughs> Waffle House, I guess. Oh. But where are white people going to fight in states that don't have Waffle House? <laughs> oh, all right. Well, now, and now this ass, I really, really need to get the, a douche quake button set up. Shush. Oh, Loki. Loki's like, I'll be your button. No, he wants food, even though it's early. It's not food time yet. Stop it. It's not early. <laughs> so this is our, 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 this dick, this motherfucker. We have had so many problems in America with trying to get relief money to people who need it. Oh, that's that's an airplane. Oh, I was going to say, do I hear an airplane? You do. That, that's an airplane. Go away, Mr. Airplane. Getting used to you not being here. Go, go, go. Landing on your street? We're near the airport. Oh, okay. Anyway. So we, we've had massive problems with, uh, fuck off. <laughs> He's coming there's back around. There's a Waffle House, yes, because I'm from the Northeast and there's no Waffle House there. I didn't know about yep. Waffle House until I met this guy. It's, wow. a, it's a different and world. I still have never set foot in one. Anyway, we had uh, the stimulus program, which was like, Here's twelve hundred dollars for four months. Have fun. Um, set an employment, and we had the payroll protection thing where you could get these loans. You applied for them, and you get these. But apparently, these have been. Not if you were related to a Trump, you could get some money. Yeah, these have been given out sort of willy nilly. Uh, case in point. California man accused of gambling away COVID relief funds. California man was arrested and ordered held without bond on Thursday for fraudulently obtaining $9 million in coronavirus relief funds and using some of the money to gamble in Vegas. Andrew Marnell, 40, a resident of the Beverly Grove neighborhood of Los Angeles, allegedly substituted a number of fraudulent law applications in relation to the coronavirus panic and obtained millions in Paycheck Protection Program funds. Prosecutors say he used some of the funds to make risky stock market bets and squandered hundreds of thousands of dollars at the Bellagio Hotel and Casino and other gambling establishments. Loans are part of an unprecedented $2.2 trillion CARES Act Already say Marnell, who's due back in court next Thursday, faces up to 30 years in prison on the bank fraud charge. Okay. I know what dude was thinking. Dude was thinking, I'm going to get the money, right? But then I'll make double the money and I'll just pay the money back. No harm, no foul. Can't lose. I got these stock picks. And you I don't know, think that's what he was thinking. Oh, you don't? I think he was assuming he would keep it and double it. <laughs> Cause fuck everybody. 
Yeah. Like, you know, I know like half the restaurants in America are going under and people are going to be evicted once that protection fails, but fuck it. I need to party. I mean, we, we can also talk about how the fuck did this guy get money? Cause I'm like, yeah. if this guy, according to the article, he doesn't own any businesses. Nope. Or have any employees. Nope. He just, he walked in, he gave them the, all right, here's your money. Have a nice day. So like, who is checking these applications? Good fucking question. Eric? <laughs> Same guy who was ver verifying security on Twitter. Yeah. The other day for the blue check marks. <laughs> okay, you got money. Okay. I just, good God damn. And you know what? I, I don't I actually don't blame him for the belief that he'd just get away with it because they just yeah. handed him the fucking money. But also like you had nine million dollars. Yep. And you blew it all. Yep. Fuck you. Yep. There are people that have been stretching the same two hundred dollars since birth. <laughs> And you blew nine million dollars. Nine fucking million dollars. And because I think I, I'm pretty sure he with the stock market bets and the gambling, I'm pretty sure he thought, no, no, I'm going to just pay it back. I've got a system. Are I'm motherfuckers like this. They're not going to pay it back. They'll just pretend they paid out their, because the whole deal was, if you had kept, retained all your employees and didn't lay anybody off, you don't have to pay it back. Right, it's a grant, not a, not so a loan. So he would just, you know, all his fraudulent employees would stay on staff and he'd keep it. Yeah, but you have to like show what you use it for. Do you? Yes. It's allegedly you have to show you have employees to get it. I'm just saying. I mean. That's, he got caught. Well, Tara, technically, I mean, you could call your cats employees at this point. They're employers. <laughs> Good point, we're staff. <laughs> we work for them. We make one of them a loft. The other one has a spot on my desk. Yeah. And the other one's just in the next room over glaring at us with seething contempt if we turn on the light. <sighs> we got another one here. Um, now, this is... Quite often, all of us on who have spent any time on the internet at all, we've been had. Whether we like it or not, we uh, uh, like some article, some some website will be like, where? And, we'll, and then it'll be like, wait a we minute. We sent the Snopes link and been like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, but most of the time, that's just a matter of we share the wrong link, we take the wrong thing seriously, we just like, oh, oops. Ah, no. no. This lady, however, kind of missed, not only did she take the wrong thing seriously, she took it too fucking far. Yes, we see. No, the mess. What is he doing? Oh, oh there's a bug on Dan's desk. It's very exciting. Now he's freaking out. Big excitement around here. Everybody hold. There's a bug. Okay, sorry. Woman tried to hire Hitman online. Girl. <laughs> it, it gets better. A Michigan. Did she use Craigslist? No, it's better. A Michigan woman who won her ex-husband murdered tried to hire a killer via a farcical website, rentahitman.com. Oh, no. According to investigators, Wendy Wine, 51, this month filled out a service request form on the site, which described itself as your point and click solution and boast 1,700... 17,985 US based field operatives. Site visitors are assured that Rent a Hitman is compliant with provisions of the 1965 Hitman Information and Protection and Privacy Act. HIPAA. A recent update on Rent a Hitman noted that we are still open during the pandemic. 
<laughs> our Wuhan offices will be working on a reduced schedule. <laughs> you fell for that. That sounded legit to you. <laughs> you think the American government passed a Hitman Privacy Act? That sounds reasonable. Man, I... And it, okay, just to give you an idea of how, how skeptical I am about shit now. Um, I don't know if you've noticed a while back, if you, if, if you pay any attention to it, IMDB now has their own video service, right? Yeah, they have like their own TV. Right, it's like free, but with ads. When I saw that at first, I thought that was a scam. Because it, so, it sounded so stupid. Like, is it run by the cops? No, like no, it's a joke. It's it's a joke site. The it's a joke, but the form line submitted to the website identified her former spouse as the intended victim, uh, prompting rent a hitman's operator to contact the Michigan State Police. Since it appeared Wine was serious about soliciting a murder, an undercover trooper subsequently met Wine in a parking lot near her home. Wine allegedly offered the supposed his man 5000 to kill her ex. Gave him an upfront payment to cover travel expenses since the target lives in Tennessee. Wine was subsequently arrested. Okay. For one thing, 5000 is dirt fucking cheap to kill somebody. Yeah. I mean, if I'm killing somebody, I'm asking at least oh, 25. Half up front. This is also kind of the plot of the whole nine yards. <clears throat> kind of. But yeah, five thousand is a bargain. I don't feel like you're going to get quality work for five thousand dollars. He might only be mostly dead. I mean, I don't know how you could spend any time on the internet at all and not have your alarm. I to, just to give you an idea to do this show. Whenever I get a story, and something seems off, some are like straightforward. There's like there's like police reports. There's there's places yeah. stuff. If something seems off, I go and Google that shit to find out if it's actually as to the best of my ability. Um, because. Because it's the Internet and you can say literally fucking anything. Right. <laughs> you can be like Tom Holland is actually a cyborg made out of cheese. <laughs> Why not? He might be. You don't know. No, he's Prove cake. It. He's cake. Everything's cake now. Well, he's cheese. <laughs> so, but to see a site called Rent a Hitman and not to go, <laughs> how do the cops not know about this, man? That seems legit. They, they, they're. Wow, how are they in a still operation? That's so weird. How's she gonna fuck? Imagine being the public defender. <laughs> Because no actual lawyer is going to take it. They're all going to be like, ma'am, no. Nope. So imagine, like, you're the public defender, and they hand you this file, and you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I make 40 fucking grand a year for this job. <laughs> oh. Our, our last story this night comes from, uh, this week comes from Maine, and... I am there. There are some levels of pettiness that can just be astonishing and, and amazing in their own way. This, this is is some. This is 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 just beautiful. This is gourmet pettiness. What you're about to see here. Ah, uh, holy fuck. Main man saws neighbor's garage in half. Amid oh boundary God. dispute. <laughs> Look at that shit. Oh, wait. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah, I know I'm using ad blocker. Stop it. It's fine. I'll look at your ads. A man who cut his neighbor's... <laughs> a man who cut his neighbor's garage in half with a, sarzo, with a sawzall was on friendly terms with the man who built the structure... Just not, just not with everyone who lived on the property after he died. <laughs> Gabriel Braun used a land surveyor's demarcation between the two lots as a guide to remove 
half the buildings sitting on his land when a dispute over the boundary line boiled over. Tracy Braun said Thursday and her husband's actions on the day after Memorial Day marked the latest and hopefully the final step of an often contentious relationship between her neighbors, others in the neighborhood, and various inhabitants of 148 Grove Street. Braun and her family moved back to Dover Foxcraft, uh, property included. Um, the, uh, apparently, they, they had, you know, Jesus Christ. It was, they, the, the property line wasn't entirely set right yeah so they built a garage on the, oh my god look at that shit <clears throat> that's can amazing I, can I, can I, that looks like some shit out of a cartoon oh <laughs> my just look at that my god just cut half the fucking gr um i don't know what a sawzall is uh, does you do dan what's a sawzall i think it's a reciprocating saw holy shit if so, that dude saw us all. If that, if it is, yeah, it's a reciprocating saw. That dude was industrious. <laughs> and that's a clean, straight line. It dude. is. Like, that's fucking quality work. That, that, that is what makes it so beautiful. That is what makes it exceptionally petty. That he did the exact line at Perfect. the property line. <laughs> Man, if I walked out one morning and I saw my I saw one of the, the building like this, I'd be like, I mean, I think I'd gone insane for a few minutes. Wouldn't you kind of have to be like, okay, hey. well played, you you win. I'd be like, I mean, I'd be checking my blood sugar. I'd be like, am I still asleep? Because that that looks like some Ripley's Believe It or Not shit. I never understand like property line disputes, like. Like, my sister had to move her whole fence, like, six feet because they had their property surveyed to put in a pool, and it turned out they were six feet. And I'm like, it's six feet of grass. Who cares? Six feet less, you got to fucking mow. <laughs> People fucking care, man. People lose their minds over this shit. They and I don't do. get it. Just good I mean... God. Maybe it's ten grand on the home value, fine. But I just, I just, oh, hi. I can't imagine getting that worked up over it. Well, and of course, because this is I not, know. Th this is this is not a good way to end this. Well, I think the stream might have crashed. Wait, wait. I think we're back. Something crashed. Let me see. I think the stream went down for a minute, but we're back. Uh, yeah, it looks okay. I had the little buffering circle for a minute, and there's a couple people in the chat that said theirs did too, but it's okay. Hmm. So everything went black, and then suddenly greedy. Yeah, suddenly greedy. Suddenly greedy. Uh, no, this standing beside you. Hi. How you doing? Grady has, however, made your shot very blurry. I can hear him purring through your mic. Oh, and look at Peggy's just showing off now. Here. Like, hi, I can sit here too. <laughs> look at me. I could be cute. Look how cute I am. <laughs> He's just like, you're not sitting right. No, but after okay yeah you've taken this in your own hands now you whether it was on the property line or not this is destruction of property yeah I, I mean you might feel better about it for like five minutes but this isn't going to end well for you also what did he do with the other half of the garage oh you can gone. see pieces of it can just you? laying nearby because in that picture, it looks like he just made that shut disappear. Like it's in the it's in the upside down now. <laughs> like he got a portal gun and just shot half the garage off. That's what he was saying. It looked like fucking. Do you ever go to Ripley's Believe It or Not and have that 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 weird fucking waterfall that ran upward? You ever seen that? I've never been to one of those places. I watched a TV show when I was a kid. No, oh, it's like that. It's like something from Ripley's or some shit. What are you doing? See, they should just make this local lore like 
a bubble like there is there's an alternate dimension and for one Where day oh. a lot, just, like that was the portal you're just gonna jump on the floor and yell at me again it's well, what yeah, you that, always do that's the game just stay here and then you'll pick, and then you'll pick me up again and then i'll struggle until you put me down and then i'll cry just stay here okay you just you just stay here I don't want to. I want to be on the floor and yell at you. <laughs> There's your big belly. The belly. <laughs> Look at this ridiculous thing. All right. So I guess I guess the first thing we learned this week is um, a. You, points for style. If you're gonna be petty, go hard. But you know, you gotta think long term on that. It it is it is memorable. Oh, there he goes. All right, there you go. He'll be back in a second. I feel sure. But but yeah, it's 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 just. <sighs> you gotta think more than five. It probably felt really good in the moment. And the fact that he got it right on the line, that is, that is amazing. Like, would you not seriously be like, okay, I lost this round. Ugh. I have been, I have been defeated. I don't know if you've ever seen that horrible old uh, Chevy Chase film, uh, Funny Farm. No. Ah, never mind then. I have seen precious few Chevy Chase films. Huh. I find them very annoying. You're, you're better off. Um, so anyway... Uh, we've learned this week that if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably a joke website. Yeah. Don't 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 offer money to kill your ex. You're probably you're not good. <sighs> oh, honey. We've learned that amazingly. If you in America, if you steal nine million dollars through a federal program. You you actually will be caught. That's stunning. Normally, that's, that's a weirdly, rounding error. It's a weirdly feel good story. <laughs> I mean, they're never going to get the money back, but we've learned the fastest way to lose the moral high ground is to punch a pregnant woman. Yes. I don't know why we had to teach you this, but we should not have had to. That should go without saying. Um. We, Unless you can prove that she's birthing the Antichrist. Yeah. That's the only time it's okay. It's the only time. We've learned that um, pretty much anything involving covertly filming your ex is not going to turn out well for anybody. Just, it's... And they're probably not going to cover for you either. Yeah, yeah, they're they're that's they're not going to be cool about it. I I feel sure. Uh, maybe maybe just you know I'm not saying that your ex maybe isn't like killing people and eating their souls or something. They might be, but maybe go cons consult an expert first, like <laughs> law enforcement. Maybe just move on with your fucking life. Well, okay, you can move on, but if if they're killing people, you might want to like talk to the police. But don't take it upon you. You can't I do mean, you, you can't vigilante that shit. And finally, we've learned there's a market for three foot dildos. Who knew? Twelve hundred dollars. What? Is, that's the other thing that's, that's amazing me. That's a twelve hundred dollar dick. What is that thing made out of? That has cost twelve hundred dollars. An interesting question because you know if you if you're making a dick three feet tall like, is it like the victoria's secret million dollar bra is it all swarovski crystals <laughs> then you definitely should not use it 